Hey, what's going on Machine Masters? My name is MG The Future. Thank you for joining me today. Today's video is going to be a two for one. One part is going to be a review of IK Multimedia's Centronic and another part is going to be about key changes, which I've recently discovered how to do a lot of different ways. However, I'm going to show you one that's kind of formulaic and easy to show you on screen. And hopefully that kind of tip will help you make some more interesting music, be able to change between keys, possibly write some very creative bridges or just take your trap to a different level. Um, the first thing I want to talk about, of course, is going to be Centronic. Last week, I did a review of Sample Tank 3. They're both made by the same company. And as a result, you can open up Centronic sounds inside of Sample Tank and layer them together. So a real piano with a fake uh, digital piano or pad, for instance. A lot of cool ways to use it together. And of course, Sample Tank 3, the holder or the player, has a different set of effects within itself that you can use to process them. But instead of breaking down everything that this does, I'm going to show you three key things. The first reason why this even showed up on my radar is that out of all the synthesizers that it models, very similarly to other plugin companies, this one models the Alesis Andromeda, which is the big, big brother of the Alesis Ion and Alesis Micron. In fact, this keyboard used is still almost $5,000. <laughs> so when they said it was a VST form, there was no questions. Everything else is like, ah, we got Moogs and Moogs and all these cool Yamahas and I have Rolling Clouds, I already have the Jupiter and the Juno, but that right there, this right here, <laughs> you won't find nowhere but here. So it's well worth it just for that alone. And what's dope about this company is that you could get the player for free it comes with free sound so you guys could try it right after this video but you could buy each instrument separately in the event you don't want them all or in case you have some overlap with some of these with other libraries you may have already um another cool one to look out for is the oberheim we know uh behringer is making a mini oberheim dsi recently made a new oberheim so uh that's going to be you want to be hearing that texture a whole lot in the few months to come. And they have a lot of cool stuff that people may sleep on as well. The, some of the DCO stuff, which is really good. And of course, if you like Kanye West, I believe Jeff Basker used it a lot during his process with Kanye. Second thing I like most about it, of course, is going to be the effects. Cause you know, IK Multimedia makes T-Rex and then T-Rex, of course, some very good studio effects. This one has a lot of stuff that's unique to it, which kind of gives it a different color and different vibe. What's useful about it, like I said, you can use it in sample tank or standalone so you don't have to worry about buying a whole bunch of VSTs or effects to add color to it it's already built in and then the last thing that really sold it to me was this technology that they added to it that most companies both software synthesizers and software effects don't pay attention to and that is going to be drift I had it up here boom drift technology you can read this little excerpt here but basically when you're dealing with hardware synthesizers, I have one, I have a DSi Evolver. When you play that thing, not only do you hear the electricity, but you hear how imperfect it is. This particular drift technology is attempting to recreate or resample that behavior and you know create some kind of algorithm that will show up in all of the patches in this instrument. So it's very dope, helps it sound a lot more realistic. So when you start processing it with the onboard effects, some UAD stuff or resample it with SP or something, it's gonna sound like it's the real synthesizer in a lot of cases. But the fact that it comes with like a billion synthesizers is going to make anyone happy. So if you don't have Omnisphere, if you don't have Arturia, if you don't have uh, the UVI stuff and things like that, and you're just getting into analog synthesizers and trying to figure out what those are about, I would say Centronic will be your best bet regardless of the price. And the price is not bad either. If you have sample tape or other uh, versions of IK Multimedia products, you can cross grade for 200. And I believe that's including all of the instruments. And like I said earlier, you get it for free and just buy each instrument individually. Also, you could buy it on iOS, which is a whole different price, but it's the same sounds. So if you like using a mobile rig, you could do that instead. Also, another cool way to get it is that IK makes a keyboard, uh, iRig, I believe it's called, 25 and a 49 key. I believe both of them, maybe the bigger one, comes with Centronic already. So it's the same price as the cross grade and you get a MIDI controller out of it and an interface. So you have a lot of different options. Just look into it and um, tell me what you think in the comments. But beyond that, I'm gonna use the sounds from Centronic in this demonstration. But what I really wanna show you is this chord changes. <laughs> and it's really gonna be kind of tricky to explain, so bear with me. 
The first thing we want to do in chord changes is just pick a key. My favorite chord changes are ones that go from minor to major. That, for whatever reason, always reminds me of the Neptunes, Ryan Leslie, Scott Storch, etc. right? And when you're dealing with it, I would say get an app or get a program on your computer or VSC or just a picture of the circle of fifths. And what you would want to do is find whatever key you're going to use. Remember, outside is major, inside is minor. Let's say our main song is going to be an A minor. And what I want to do is go from an A minor chord progression to a major chord progression. You could do it vice versa as well. This formula works both directions. But what you can do is go from A minor to any of these keys. <laughs> and really, really good gospel piano people and just piano players in general know the different shortcuts and hacks to do that. But to make this sound as smooth as possible, I will recommend to you guys to only use majors or minors that are next to it, right? So going from A minor to C major is really easy because they all overlap. They're the same chords. There's no note change. So you can do that. It's kind of tricky but I would avoid it. So I would go diagonal. I would go to either this G or go to F. Now, if you pick something different like F minor and you wanna to go to a major, I would pick E flat major or D flat major, right? So basically the diagonals when you're looking at it from the circle of fifths. So in this example, I'm gonna go from A minor to G major, right? So the first thing we wanna do, I have sample tank up. Sample tank is loading a Centronic 99 patch, some tines. So I play a lot of crazy chords like that all the time, right? But <laughs> changing that into a different key is a different story. That, that, that modal interchange is cool, but I'll show you. So first things first, we're gonna start with A minor. Um, and the minors are kind of important. Um, I use natural Aeolian a lot. The other minors, the fifth or the dominant chord changes its shape or gender. Be very careful with that. For this demonstration, I'm gonna stick to natural minor within FL Studio. You could do this in any DAW. FL Studio is just the easiest for me to show it to you. So in A minor, we have the one. And what I wanna do is use the one as my first chord to make this very simple. And then I want another chord, maybe like the four or the five or the six. So in this example, I'll probably use the four. So two, three, four. And you notice with the scale highlighting on an FL Studio, we can easily see what the scale is by the white lanes. So we just count four up, one, two, three, four. I'll make a very simple chord here by skipping every other. And the same here. We'll get a decent tempo going. What are, what are the cool kids doing these days, 130 to 135? All right, I'll back this up. Let me change my snap real quick. I'll make sure these extend properly. Cool, so my kick would go there and my kick would go here if I had a drum beat with it. You can move these chords wherever you want, whatever your style is. We're gonna stick to two. I'm going from one to four. To make this sound smoother, I'm gonna drop the top on this one, an inversion, so I'm holding shift, or actually command and down. Perfectly. What I'm gonna do is rename this A minor, and I'm gonna make this a simple one and four, right? Now, my next key, I'm gonna do something very similar. Since I'm going diagonals, I got F major, G major. Let's do G major this time. Let's create a new pattern for that. And we're gonna do the same exact pattern. But of course, it's gonna be different chords, different keys. This is actually gonna be capitalized because we're in, like, if it's a major, the one, four, and five will be majors. If you're in a minor, the one and four, five will be minors. So this is gonna be capitalized to represent these are major chords. We're gonna helpers, scale highlighting, G, major now keep in mind if you know how to play this stuff like by hand just play it by hand so that's one two three four all right i'm gonna do the same trick we're gonna drop this one down it's the same exact shape but they're different chords and they're gonna feel different because two of them are minor and two of them are major now when i draw these next to each other you're gonna notice that it could work because technically in music theory, you can force a change, but I'm gonna show you how to make a smooth transition between them. And that doesn't sound bad. And the reason why that doesn't sound bad currently is because of where they're located with each other. They all have overlapping chords within each of their scales. So they are friendly with each other, but I'm gonna take it to another level. And the next level of this is something that they call, called a two, five, one change up or two, five, one key change. Basically you're playing two, five and one chords of the scale that you want to go to, leaving the scale that you are in. So in this particular example, I'm leaving a minor 
and I'm going into G major. In order to blend or transition properly, I want to play the two and the five of my next scale, which is G major, and then go into the one and finish the rest of the chord progression. You use this kind of movement for bridges, common in R&B, even some hip hop stuff, uh, low key, some of the dope producers, um, especially on the West Coast, they do a lot of these kind of tricks. You could, you could just use it for intros, right? Have your intro start in a minor and the rest of the song could be major. And also this works in reverse. If the key that you started in was G major, you could do a two, five, one in A minor and go into A minor. So it works both directions. So I'm gonna show you what that looks like starting with the G major one, right? So I'm gonna do this one different. I'm gonna call it two, five, one. And this is my G major one. It is as easy as you think it is. We're actually not even gonna to have to do the one. We're just gonna do the two and the five, right? So if this is the one, this is the two and three, four, five. So the next one will be one, but we already did that in our other pattern. So I'm just gonna do a two and a five here. Let's try it, drop it down. Has a nice little twangy, funny sound to it, but we could do the same exact thing. We could drop this down. It's funny how this works. They're pretty much all the same shape when you really think about it. It's kind of creepy. So I'm gonna put this here. That's gonna be our transition into this major. So we have the minor progression, then we're going to the two, five, one of the next scale, which is going to be a major. The one is going to start here because we're doing one, four, one, four for the rest of this particular song or idea. What I actually want to do to that is I want to speed that up. Now, if you want to bring it back, we can do the same exact thing. We can do two, five, one, make this one an A minor instead and have the same exact pattern, but in the key of A minor. So I'm going to do the same exact thing. Let me see. So that's one, that's two, three, four, five. And like I said earlier, these are all the same shape for the most part in this particular formula. So it works to any chord actually. I picked ones that are close, but it also works when you go further apart. So now what I wanna show you how to do is we have this two, five, and one going back and forth, but I wanna show you how to give it some more color, more flavor um, to make it a little bit more smoother. So what I'm on now is I have a duplicate of the A minor transition going from minor or going from this major back into the minor. So we're using the two, five, one of A minor to go back to A minor. What I'm going to do is instead of using just a regular two and five chord that we have in that A minor scale, I'll make this a little bit more exotic. And the easiest way to do that is to convert this into a seventh What I'll do is I'll mute this background one real quick. It has a weird tension about it. Like even without anything else playing, I can kind of hear it. So when you're in this kind of situation, change the gender of the chord, meaning you're going from minor to major or major to minor. In this case, we're gonna take this F and move it up one. And this chord becomes a minor seventh. The next chord, the root is here. You can skip every other one, same story. It's all right, but when you're dealing with fives, because this is a two to a five, you would want that to be a dominant chord. Dominant chords work for all kinds of transitions, bridges, not even just in this example, just in a whole lot of different styles of music, because the five is the dominant chord of the scale of A minor. So to do that, just move up the second key one. In both cases, we completely change the gender of the chord. So they're not in scale per se because we changed those two keys. However, they work near flawlessly. So I wanna put this here instead. And now what I wanna do is I wanna flip it to give it a better shape. There we go. 
So it's a much smoother transition. The chords are the same, but the relationship or the inversion of these chords are different. So we're good. We didn't change any keys or anything. It's all the same. So we have two five regular here, and then we have a two minor seven, and then a five dominant seven here. And it just helps. It helps in certain situations. The flavor version of these help, especially when you're doing a way huger key jump as well. And on a more advanced level, you want to use different sounds too. Like if you're playing piano the whole time, drop it into a pad instead. You, you know what the cool kids are doing. But let me see if I can color these up a little bit. And what I want to do is I want to stack these up real quick to kind of give them some more character. So I want to start with this main chord real quick. We're going to paste it on this ARP here, play it in pattern mode. So this ARP is Centronic itself. You'll notice this icon here that looks like steps. They have a few arpeggio patterns. Actually, they have a whole bunch to get you started. And of course, you could draw and save your own. So this is Glacial Bell from this synthesizer here. The DCOX, I believe it's a Roland model. And now I want to do the same thing. I want to make a pad around it. I want to drop it down an octave. I'll do the same thing with the bass. The bass is a little bit trickier because we did an inversion earlier. They stack very well. They blend beautifully too. It doesn't take a whole lot of EQ and stuff. You put them all in the same sub or key group and add similar effects or lo-fi them out like I like to do. Just hold on, we coming home. Let's try it. that makes sense comments questions or concerns leave them in the box below thank you guys for tuning in be sure to follow us i'm at mg the future on instagram be sure to follow at machine masters as well until next time peace